Hello. 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 How was it doing? Hello. Good morning, students. Now we will start with the remaining examples from our last lecture. Okay. So first example today. So we are given here matrix A, a two, two cross two matrix and a matrix B. What we have to find here? We have to find adjoint of we have to find adjoint of AB. What is adjoint of AB? That is we have to find it. So first we have to find what? First we have to find the multiplication of AB. So we will multiply first these two matrix. Okay, the first matrix is 3, 2, 7, 5. And second matrix is 6, 7, 8, 9. So we will multiply the two matrices. Okay, what is the product of these matrices? So we will first take first row and first column. First row from first matrix and first column from second matrix. So what is the product? Because 3 into 6 it is 18 plus 2 into 8 it is 16 then first row second column that is 3 into 7 it is 21 plus 2 into 9 it is 18 then again then for second row first column it is second row first column 7 into 6 it is 42 plus <coughs> 5 into 8 it is 4 0 now second row and second column you see therefore 7 into 7 it is 49 plus 5 into 9 it is 45 what is the addition of these numbers so that will be our resultant matrix so 18 plus 16 it is 34 plus 18 plus 21 it is 39 and again 42 plus 40 it is 82 82 and 49 plus 45 it is 94 but this is not our answer okay what is it this is product of matrix a and b what we have to find we have to find adjoint of adjoint of a b so in the last lecture we have learned how to find adjoint of a 2 cross 2 matrix how to find an adjoint of 2 cross 2 matrix now it's a simple way to find adjoint of matrix adjoint of 2 cross 2 matrix what do we have to do is 34 and 94 we have to swap their positions so 94 comes here and 34 goes here okay so this 39 becomes minus 39 and this 82 becomes minus 82 that is our answer so which one is the correct option here so first option okay first option 94 minus 39 minus 82 and 34 this is so this is a a is the a is the correct option okay, okay. next example now so what here we have given a two cross two matrix and we have to find determinant of adjoint of okay. so what does this indicates these two lines indicates determinant we, have, we first have to find adjoint of matrix a then we have to find 
determinant of that matrix. How to? So we are given a a is equal to what? It is four, two, three, and four. Four, two, three, four. Therefore, adjoint of a. What is adjoint of a? We have to find it in a similar way, like the last example, or we have studied previously last lecture. Okay. What is adjoint of a? This is four, two, three, four. So this four, this four, and this four, they swap their position. So four comes here, and this four goes here. So four and four. That doesn't make any change. And this two, this this two becomes minus two, and three becomes minus three. That is the adjoint of a. This is the simplest way to find adjoint of a. A two cross two matrix. Adjoint of two cross two matrix. Now we have to find determinant of adjoint of a. Determinant of Adjoint of a. What is the determinant of two cross two matrix? How do you find it? We have to find first product of these numbers. Four into four it is sixteen minus minus two into minus three it is six. Sixteen minus six it is ten. Sixteen minus six it is ten. So what is the correct option here? B. B is equal to B. Ten is the correct option. Okay. So here yeah, again next example. So what we have given here? We are given a two cross two matrix here. A is equal to three, two, one, and four. We have to find A into adjoint of A. A into adjoint of A. So we have to find a product. Product of matrix A. Product of matrix A. If matrix adjoint of A. So we have to find first adjoint of A. Okay. We have to find adjoint of A. What is adjoint of A? Again, okay, similar process. This three and four will swap their positions. Four and three, and this two becomes minus two, and one becomes minus one. This is adjoint of a. So this here is a, and this is adjoint of a. What we have to find? We have to find a into adjoint of a. So we will take product of these two matrices. So a into adjoint of a. What is it? Three, two, one, and four into four minus two minus one and three. We have to find the product of these two matrices. So first, what we will consider? We will consider first product of first row and first column. First row of matrix A and first column of matrix. Adjoint of A. That is first row of first matrix and first column of first matrix. Okay, what is it? Three into four. It is twelve plus two into minus one. Two into minus one. It is minus two. Okay. Again, next. What is the next step? First row and second column. First row and second column. So three into minus two. It is minus six. Minus six plus two into three. It is six. Okay. It is six. Then what we will do? We will multiply second row and first column. Second row and first column. So one into four it is four plus four into minus one it is minus two. Okay. Now the last step is second row with second column. Second row with second column. So one four we multiply with minus two three. So one into minus two it is minus two. Plus four into three it is twelve. Four into three it is twelve. So we will solve this now. So my twelve plus minus two that that is twelve minus two. Twelve minus two it is ten. Minus six plus six they get cancelled. So it's zero. So again four plus minus two it is four minus four they get cancelled again. This comes out to be zero. So minus two plus twelve that is Twelve minus two. Twelve minus two. What is it? Ten. Ten minus two is ten. So the correct option is here. A. Matrix A. Matrix A is the correct option. Okay. Ten zero zero ten is the correct option. Okay. Next example. So this is a bit tricky example. Okay. What we have given? We have given a Matrix, and we have to find inverse of this matrix. So then, I will write the standard formula for finding inverse of any matrix. So what is it? 
a inverse is equal to what? 1 upon determinant of a into adjoint of adjoint of matrix a. Adjoint of matrix a that these two things we have to find, then we will be able to solve for a inverse. So determinant of a and adjoint of a. First we will find determinant of matrix. Anytime you are asked to find the inverse of any matrix, you should find first determinant. If the determinant becomes zero, if the determinant is zero, then you should uh, you cannot find the inverse of that matrix. If the determinant is zero, the matrix is matrix cannot be inverse. Okay. So first we will find determinant of matrix. So how to find determinant of a? We have one. a is equal to what? A is equal to one sine alpha minus sine alpha into minus one. This is the matrix that we are given. Okay. So how to find determinant of a? Simple way. One into minus one. One into minus one. It is one into minus one minus sine alpha into minus sine alpha. Okay. What is one into minus one? One into minus one. It is minus one minus sine alpha into minus sine alpha. It is minus sine square alpha. Okay. What is it? It is minus sine square alpha. Okay. So now it is minus one. So this minus and this minus it becomes plus plus sine square alpha. Sine square alpha. What is it? It is equal to minus one plus sine square alpha. Minus one plus sine square alpha. So if we take minus common. What it becomes? It, is, it becomes 1 minus sine square alpha. 1 minus sine ah. square alpha. And what is 1 minus sine square alpha? It is, it is cos square. Okay. Ah, it is 1 minus sine square alpha is cos square alpha. Cos square alpha. Why it is it like that? Because we know the trigonometric identity that is sine square x plus cos square x is equal to what? 1. So that becomes it is cos square x. Cos square x is equal to what? 1 minus sine square x. This, this identity we have written is okay. 1 minus sine square alpha is equal to cos square alpha. So this comes out to be minus cos square alpha. Let me raise it first. Okay. Wait. So determinant of a is equal to minus cos square alpha minus cos square alpha. So we have found out first determinant of a. Now we will find adjoint of this matrix. How to find adjoint of this matrix? So what is a? A is equal to a is equal to one sine alpha minus sine alpha minus one. This is the matrix. We are given okay. So adjoint of A is equal to adjoint of A. How to find adjoint of two cross two matrix? So this this one and minus will will interchange their positions. So minus one will come here and this will go here. So minus one and one and sine alpha they will just change their signs. So this becomes sine alpha. So sine alpha becomes minus sine alpha and minus sine alpha becomes plus sine alpha. Okay. They will just change their signs. Okay, this is the adjoint of this matrix. Okay. Adjoint of matrix. Now, now the standard formula says a inverse is equal to one upon determinant of a into adjoint of matrix a. So one upon determinant of a. What is determinant of a? Minus cos square alpha into 
into what is the addition of will minus one minus sine alpha sine alpha and one. So this is our answer. But can you see this answer in any any of the options? No. So what we have to do? We have to solve it for few more steps. Okay. So what is one upon cos square alpha? What is one upon cos square alpha? It is sec square alpha. Okay. It is sec square alpha. How it is? Because cos and sec are reciprocals of each other. That's why one upon cos square alpha is equal to sec square alpha. And this minus, if you multiply this minus. Inside the matrix, then this minus one becomes one. Minus sine alpha becomes sine alpha. Then sine alpha becomes minus sine alpha, and one becomes minus one. This this happens because we multiplied it by this minus minus sine. Okay, so all the uh, all the signs inside the matrix they get changed. Okay, so this is the correct option. Okay, this is the correct option. Where do we see this option? In option number C. So C is the correct option. Okay, C. Okay, this is the correct option. Okay, next example. So again, we have we are given a matrix. Matrix A is equal to what? Four, two, three, and minus four. And we have been asked to find adjoint of this matrix. Adjoint of Matrix A. So we will find how how to find this. First, we will find adjoint of matrix. So first, we will find just adjoint of matrix. How to find adjoint of matrix? Two cross two matrix. Adjoint of A is equal to so this four and minus four. Four will interchange their positions. So minus four comes here. Four goes there. This two becomes my, minus two, and three becomes. Minus. So this is the simple, simple way to find adjoint of matrix A. So this is adjoint of matrix A. Now we have to find determinant of adjoint of A. Determinant of adjoint of A. How to find determinant? Simple it is. The product, the product of this should be subtracted from product of this. Okay. So first minus four into four minus four into four minus. Minus two into minus three. So what is minus four into four? It is sixteen. Sixteen minus. Oh sorry, it is minus sixteen. Okay. Minus four into four. It is minus sixteen. And minus minus two into minus three. It is sixteen. So what it becomes? So sorry, this this number. It is not sorry. It is not minus four. It is four. So we we are given a is equal to four, two, three, and four. Okay, this is the matrix that we are given. Okay, now to we will find first. We will first find adjoint of this matrix. Adjoint of matrix A. What is adjoint of matrix A? Four and four. We interchange their positions. Two becomes minus two, and three becomes minus three. This is adjoint of this two cross two matrix. Then next we will find determinant of adjoint of it. Determinant of adjoint of it. How to find? Four into four minus minus two into minus three. So four into four it is sixteen minus minus two into minus three it is six. That is. Sixteen minus six is equal to ten. So that is the correct option. Okay. Now we will see next example. So this is the question that has been asked in two thousand seven CET exam. Okay. So we are given two matrices. Two matrices are given here. A is equal to what? Two minus two minus two and two. And B is equal to one, 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 and one. Okay. So first option is A inverse is equal to B. Second option is B inverse does not exist. Third option is A inverse does not exist. And fourth option is both B and C. So this has a high probability that both of these matrices do not have inverse. So we, we'll, what we have to find today? 
we will we'll find determinant of these matrices. So what? How to check if the A equals does not exist? What? If determinant of A is equal to zero, what does it imply? It implies that A inverse does not exist. Okay. So if this the determinant value comes out to be zero, then the matrix mat inverse matrix does not exist. So you will here find determinant of A. What is determinant of this matrix? Matrix A. It is two into two minus minus two into minus two. So two into two it is four minus minus two into minus two it is again minus two into minus two it is again. 4. 4 minus 4 it is 0. Similarly for B, B is equal to 1 into 1 minus 1 into 1. So 1 into 1 it is 1 minus 1 into 1 it is 1. So 1 minus 1 it is 0. So for both matrices, determinant of A is equal to 0 and determinant of B is equal to 0. So for both matrices, value of their determinant was 0, which implies that both A inverse and B inverse, so both do not exist. Okay. So option B is B inverse does not exist. Option C is A inverse does not exist. And option D is both B and C. So that is our correct option. Okay. Both B and C as A inverse and B inverse both do not exist. Okay. Next example. So here a three cross three matrix. Again, this this is asked in your C A T exam in 2017. Previously asked questions. This is here a three cross three matrix is given. Let us write first what is the matrix. A is equal to what? Alpha 14 minus 1, 2, 3, 1, and 6. Two and three. Okay. This is the matrix that is given in the example. Okay. So what they have said? They have said that in, if the inverse of the matrix, the matrix is given, does not exist, then the value of alpha is what? Okay. So they have said that matrix inverse of this matrix does not exist. That is, a inverse does not does not exist and we have already seen that if determinant of a is equal to zero then a inverse does not exist okay what is the condition if determinant is equal to zero so we will take determinant to be zero and solve this okay so what is determinant determinant of a how to find determinant of three cross three matrix we first have to consider this first element a11 that is alpha and alpha into 3 into 3 it is 9 minus 1 into 2 it is 2 minus 14 we will consider this element we have to put minus sign here so minus 14 into 2 into 3 it is 6 and 1 into 6 it is 6 again so 2 into 3 is 6, 1 into 6 it is 6. Plus my this plus minus 1. So we will directly write here minus 1. Okay. Minus 1 into what? 2 into 2 it is 4. Minus 3 into 6 it is 18. Okay. 3 into 6 it is 18. Now we will solve this. So 9 minus 2 is what? 7. So 7 alpha minus what is this? My 6 minus 6 it is 0. So this term will be all 0. So we should not consider this. This is 0. So now minus this sign minus 4 minus 18 it is minus 14. This is minus 14. Minus 14 into 1 it is 14. And minus and minus becomes plus. So 7 alpha plus 14. So what is the value of this determinant? As they have said that. A inverse does not exist. The determinant of this matrix is equal to <coughs> zero. So we solve it here. So what we have find seven alpha plus 
14 is equal to what? Is equal to zero. Now we will solve this. Okay. So seven alpha is equal to minus 14. If this plus 14 goes there on the right side, it becomes minus 14. That is alpha is equal to minus 14 divided by seven. And alpha is equal to what? Seven into two minus two. And alpha is minus two. So minus two. So that is D. D is the correct option. Okay. So that is how you solve such kind of examples. If A inverse, if they have said that A inverse does not exist, what does that mean? That means that determinant of that matrix is zero. Next example. Then similar example, just the well, uh, position of that variable is changed. Okay. Similar, similar example. There's, so here we have one matrix A. It's a three cross three matrix. So we write it down again. It's one, two, x, four, minus one, seven, two, four, minus six. Okay. This is the matrix that is given in the example. What they have said? They have said that inverse does not exist. Inverse does not exist. What does that mean? It means determinant of a is equal to zero okay so determinant of a we will try to find determinant of a what is determinant of a first we will consider one one into bracket minus one into minus six minus one into minus six it is six minus seven into four it is 28 okay then minus two the next next element that we will consider is two it is minus 2, okay. 4 into minus 6, it is minus 24, minus 7 into 2, it is 14, minus 24, minus 14, okay. So last, then plus x, plus x is equal to what? 0. So x, 4 into 4, it is 16, minus, minus 1 into 2, it is 2. So it becomes plus 2, it will become plus 2. Now we try to solve this. 6 minus 20. So value of determinant A is equal to 0. It is 0. 1 into 6 minus, minus 20. What, what is 6 minus 20? It is minus 22. What is the value of this? It is minus 38. What is minus 38 into minus 2? That becomes plus 32 into 2. It is 76. Okay, 76 plus 16 plus 2 it is 18, 18, 18 x, 16 plus 2, 18, 18 x. So this example we have to solve. So minus 22 plus 76. What is minus 22 plus 76? It is 54 plus 54, okay, plus 54 plus 18 x. So, okay. We'll solve here. What is we have found? 18 x plus 54 is equal to 0. So if we take this plus 54 to the right side, it becomes 18x is equal to minus 54. And x is equal to minus 54 divided by, divided by 18. So x is equal to 18 minus 18, 18 is a 54. So it becomes minus 3x is equal to minus 3x is equal to what? It's minus 3. So this is the correct option. Minus 3 is the correct, correct option. That is the way we found out any element that is not given in the matrix. If it said that the inverse of the matrix does not exist. Okay. okay. This is one example. Here. This is also previously asked in some exam. So what is u? u is equal to 1 upon root 2. 1 upon root 2 minus 1 upon root 2. Then again 1 upon root 2. 1 upon root 2. Okay. This is the matrix given in the example, and you have to find u inverse. Okay. You have to find u inverse. How to find again? U inverse is equal to 1 upon determinant of A into adjoint of so we have to find first determinant of a, then we have to find 
add joint okay what is determinant of sorry adjoint of u so first we have to find determinant of u then we have to find adjoint of u what is determinant of u determinant of u is equal to 1 upon root 2 first we will consider these two elements 1 upon root 2 into 1 upon root 2 minus now we will consider these two elements okay minus 1 upon root 2 and 1 upon root 2 so this one upon the multiplication of this is one upon two. It is one upon two. So one into one into one and root two into root two is root two square. That is two again. So this this minus and this minus. This two minus becomes plus and one upon root two into one upon root two is again one upon two. So one into one is equal to one and root two into root two is two again. So one. Per, 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 is equal to what? This 1. This is half, this is half. Half plus half is equal to 1. So this becomes 1. Okay. Half plus half is equal to 1. So determinant of u is equal to what? It is 1. Now we will try to find adjoint of matrix. So what is u given here? u is equal to 1 upon root 2 minus 1 upon root 2 then 1 upon root 2 1 upon root 2 this is the matrix here so how do we find adjoint of this matrix how to find adjoint of these two elements will have their position so 1 upon root 2 this two are the same element so I think it is left here it will be remain same. One upon root two. One upon root two. One upon root two. So this minus one upon root two becomes one upon root two, and one upon root two becomes minus one upon root two. Okay. So this is adjoint of u. Now according according to this according to this formula, u inverse is equal to one. U inverse is equal to one upon determinant of it determinant of a into adjoint of a what is determinant of a determinant of a is 1 determinant of a is 1 and adjoint of a is equal to 1 upon root 2 1 upon root 2 minus 1 upon root 2 and 1 upon root 2 this is according to the definition so 1 upon 1 is the this is equal to 1 so we need not to consider this so this uh, is not going to change anything uh, for this matrix so the answer is this matrix okay what is it so the answers are the answers given are different from what we have so what is it this matrix what does it look like it look like looks like transpose of u okay transpose what is transpose of u this is not u okay this is not u so you if you see this is u so answer it if we check for b so u this is not u okay so if you uh, see properly then this is not u this is not even i what is i i is one zero zero one this is what i but this is not i when zero not u, it's not zero it's, it is not zero matrix some numbers are obtained here so this is not zero matrix so then we will check for u transpose what is u transpose u transpose is so again okay, we have this matrix as u we will write transpose of that matrix how to uh, write transpose of any matrix so first row has to be written as columns so one upon one upon root two minus one upon root two and second row should be written as second column one upon root two one upon root two so if we look closely, this matrix is same as this matrix. So proper answer is Q transpose. That is the correct option. Okay. So let us see next example.
Okay, this is this example is asking 2007 CD Maharashtra CD. Okay. So what is given here? Of the two cross two matrix is given here, and you have to find A inputs. Okay. What is A? A is equal to five, four, three, and two. And you have to find A inverse. What is A inverse? I will write it again. A inverse is equal to A inverse is equal to one upon determinant of A into adjoint of A. So we will first find determinant of A. Every time you are asked to find A inverse, you should find first determinant of A in order to check if the inverse exists or not. Okay. So what is determinant of A? Determinant of A is equal to Five into two minus four into three. Five into two it is ten minus four into three it is twelve. So ten minus ten minus twelve it is ten minus twelve it is minus two. So minus two is the determinant. So it is non-zero. So inverse does exist. So we will find now adjoint of so. We have already found determinant of A. Now we will find adjoint of A. How to find adjoint of A? So A is what is A? Five, four, three, and two. This is the given matrix. So it's A. So adjoint of A is equal to what? How do we find adjoint of A? So five and two it becomes two and five. Five goes to this place. Two comes out, comes to this place. So the, this four becomes minus four and three becomes minus three. That is adjoint of A. Okay. Now we will find according to the standard formula, A inverse is equal to one upon determinant of A into adjoint of A. We will find A inverse. So what is determinant of A? As we have already found, it is minus two, one upon minus two. And what is adjoint of A? Adjoint of A. This is adjoint of it. It's two minus four minus three and five. Okay. This is the correct option. If you are finding this in the option, this is your correct option. Okay. So it is minus one by two. See, B is the correct option here. Okay. Minus one by two. This is minus one by two. Two minus four minus three and five. Two. Minus four, minus three and five. Okay, okay. we will see next example. Now. Okay. A matrix is given here. A three cross three matrix is given, and it is said that the matrix is invertible. What does it mean? So we have seen that matrix is not invert invertible for or determinant of A is equal to zero. So matrix is invertible set. That means A inverse a determinant of A is not equal to zero. Okay. <coughs> this means that the matrix A has in inverse or matrix A is invertible. That indicates that determinant of A is not equal to zero. Determinant of A is not equal to zero. So using that we have to solve this question. Okay. What we are given? We are given a matrix here. Matrix is three cross three. Three cross three matrix. One zero minus k two one three and k zero and one. This example might look difficult, but it is not. So now we will find determinant of matrix A. What is determinant of A? So first we will consider. One, one into. We will take first this one into one is equal to one minus three into zero is zero minus zero into. We do not have to calculate this as outside is zero, so this will all become zero. Now we will consider this minus k minus k into bracket two into zero two into zero it is zero minus k into one it is. K. So now we will solve this. Okay. Determinant of K. So one one minus zero. One minus zero it is one. One into one is equal to one. 
this is zero into anything that doesn't matter it will be zero minus k into minus k this is minus k okay this will be minus k so minus into minus okay plus k into k this k square so it becomes one plus k square to determine what is determinant of a one plus k square okay determinant of a is equal to one plus k square but what we have already seen what this this the matrix a is invertible what does it indicate it indicates that determinant of a is not equal to zero that means we will write it again 1 plus k square is equal to determinant of a as we have found out here is not equal to is not equal to 0 that means 1 plus k square is not equal to 0 1 plus k square is not equal to 0. So we will take this 1 to the right side. So k square is not equal to minus 1. That is what k not equal to if we take root on both sides. Root on both sides. Okay. Root on both sides. k is equal to k is not equal to root of minus 1. So what is the root of minus 1? Root of minus 1 it is k. What is the root of minus 1? This is imaginary numbers. Okay? Imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers. They are imaginary numbers. So k is not equal to root of minus 1 means that k is not imaginary. K is not imaginary. So the answer will be k all real k okay. all real k will be the correct option okay. all real k is the correct option that is the way to find it okay. one thing you have to remember here is that if the if you have said that the matrix a is invertible that means determinant of a is not equal to zero and if it said that matrix a does not have a inverse or it is not invertible then we we have to consider that mod determinant of a is equal to zero next example so okay. so we have given a matrix a a two cross two matrix and we have also given this part okay and you have to find lambda okay we have to find lambda now what, what is given? A inverse is equal to lambda into adjoint of matrix A. Okay. This is given here. What does it look like? It looks like the standard formula of A inverse. What is the standard formula for A inverse? A inverse is equal to 1 upon determinant of A into adjoint of A. Okay. 1 into determinant of A into adjoint of it. So here A inverse, here also A inverse. So what does it indicate? It indicates that determinant of A is equal to, 1 upon determinant of A is equal to lambda. It indicates that lambda is equal to 1 upon determinant of A. So what we have to find here? We have to find determinant of A which will be the value of lambda. Okay. Now we will find the determinant of A here. What is A given? A is equal to 0. 3, 2, and 0. Okay, 0, 3, 2, 0. We will find determinant of that matrix. Determinant of A is equal to what? First, 0 into 0 it is. First, we will find product of these two. 0 into 0 it is 0. Minus 3 into 2 it is 6. So, determinant of A is equal to minus 6. Okay. So, again, we will. Determinant of A is equal to minus 6. If we put this value in here, 1 upon. What is the determinant of it? It is minus 6. So lambda is equal to what? 1 upon minus 6. Or you can say lambda is equal to minus 1 upon 6. So what is it? Which is the correct option? This is the correct option. Minus 1 upon 6. This is also asked in some entrance exam before. 
true. That's how you find the value of lambda. One thing you should always remember is that formula for a inverse one upon determinant of a into adjoint of a. Okay. Okay. We have some another example. This is also asked in some CET example twice in 2003 and 97. So we are given a matrix A here. A matrix A is given. What is A? A is equal to 3, 2, 0, and 1. 3, 2, 0, and 1. And we have to find A inverse 2. A inverse 2. Cube of matrix A inverse. First, what we will do? We will find first. A inverse. How to find A inverse? What is A inverse? A inverse is equal to 1 upon determinant of A into adjoint of A. Okay. So we will find first A inverse. So what is determinant of A? Determinant of A is equal to 3 into 1. It is 3 minus 2 into 0. 2 into 0 it is 0. So determinant of A is equal to what? It is 3. Determinant of A is equal to 3. Now we will find adjoint of A. Okay. Adjoint of A we will find. Adjoint of A. Adjoint of A. What is A? A is equal to 3, 2, 0 and 1. 3, 2, 0, 1. So what is adjoint of A? How to find adjoint of A here? So these two interchange their positions. So one comes here, three goes here. So two and zero, two becomes minus two and zero, zero, zero is neutral. So it cannot change its sign, zero. So one minus two, zero and three. Okay, this is adjoint of it. Now we will find inverse. Inverse, what is inverse? From this definition, we will find inverse. So A inverse is equal to what? One upon what is determinant of it? This is this is determinant of it is three into what is adjoint of it? Adjoint of a is equal to one minus two zero and three. This is this is actually a inverse. Okay, this is the value of a inverse. I will write it again here. A inverse is equal to one upon three one minus two zero three. This is the value of A inverse. But what we have been asked? We have been asked that cube of that one. It's okay, cube. Okay, so we now have to find this is A inverse. We have to find now cube of that one. Let me erase this first. So A inverse we have already found and now we we find the cube of it. So this one by three cube of this one by three will become one upon three cube. It is one upon twenty-seven. That you do not have to worry about. In every exam option you will see one upon twenty-seven here. Okay. So now we have to find cube of this matrix. How do we find cube of this matrix? 1 minus 2, 0, 3 into 1 minus 2, 0, 3 into 1 minus 2, 0, and 3. This product we have to find. See? So we will first take first row and first column. So 1 into 1 it is 1 into 1 it is 1 plus minus 2 into 0 it is 0. So first row, second column, 1 into minus 2 it is minus 2. Minus 2 into 3 it is minus 6. Okay. 1 into minus 2 it is minus 2. Minus 2 into 3 it is minus 6. So now second row and first column. 0 into 1 it is 0. And 3 into 0 it is 0 plus 0. Now second row and second column. 0 into minus 2 it is 0. And 3 into 3 it is 9. And this matter should be written again. 1 minus 2, 0 and 3. 
now we will calculate purpose matrix 1 plus 0 it is 1 minus 2 minus 6 it is minus 8 0 plus 0 it is 0 and 0 plus 9 it is 9 and the second matrix okay. 1 minus 2 0 and 3 okay let's make some place to write We will multiply these two matrices. Okay. Is equal to what? So first row and first column. First row and first column. One into one it is one. And minus eight into zero it is zero. And first row, second column. First row and second column. So one into minus two it is minus two. And minus eight into three it is minus two into minus eight into three it is minus. 24 minus 24. Now we will find second row and first column. What is second multiplication of second row and first column? It's 0 into 1, it is 0 plus 9 into 0, it is 0 again. Now second row and second column. What is multiplication of second row and second column? It is 0 into minus 2, it is 0. 9 into 3, it is 27. Okay, 27. Now we will calculate this again. 1 plus 0 is equal to 1 minus 2 minus 24 it is minus 26. Okay. 0 plus 0 it is 0. And 0 plus 27 it is 27. Okay. And we already the cube of this part is 1 upon 3. 1 upon 3 cube of this is 1 upon 27. So that will be the multiply 1 upon 27 okay. 1 upon 27 and this matrix where can you see this 1 minus 26 0 27 1 minus 1 to 1 minus 26 0 and 27 here you can see this okay so correct option is a okay next example so these are the examples of matrices okay. now we will see Two things about logic. So these are the examples of matrices. If you have any doubt, you can ask in your WhatsApp. Logic. So we will first see a few things, two basic things about mathematical logic. So you must have learned what is a statement first. Okay. You must have learned what is a statement. What is a statement? A statement is a certain sentence that has a confirm value. It may be true, true, or it may be false. Such like the statement is. Let me write a statement. What is the statement? Mm. Two, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Okay. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. This is a statement. Okay. This is a statement which has and it has truth value. What is its truth value? What is the truth value of this statement? It is T. Okay. So again, also. 2 plus 2 is equal to 7. Okay. You cannot say that this is not a statement. This is also a statement. Okay. This is also a statement. But its truth value is its truth value is false. Okay. This is false, but it's still a statement. Okay. So any sentence that has a confirm value, it is okay. Any state a sentence that has a confirm value whether it may be uh, true or may be false such a sentence is called as a statement so there are other kind of sentences that we are going to study so first okay. first interrogative sentence Inter 
little sentences interrogative sentences what is interrogative means interrogation means what what is it what is it or, or question question type of sentences if you are asked any question what is it is a question what where are you it is a question so these are not statements okay these are not statements these are not state statements these are interrogative sentences you cannot answer you cannot find their truth value they cannot be true or false you can answer this question but that that cannot be true or false okay so these are considered as sentences these are linguistic sentences this cannot be considered as mathematical statements okay second type second type exclamatory sentences exclamatory exclamatory sentences exclamatory sentences what you must have learned these sentences in your previous standards okay how beautiful beautiful it is okay this is exclamatory sentence so this also cannot be considered as mathematical statement or um, how strong you are this is exclamatory sentence so this cannot be considered as mathematical statement okay so again uh, command command sentences command sentence or order order what is command sentence or order do it so this is a command walk on the road this is this is a command somebody is Uh, saying uh, these things to some another way, so this is a command. This is order to you, order to do something. That is a command sentence. So this is also not a logical statement. This is not a logical statement. This is not a logical statement. Okay. Third right, type right. also for request. 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 Request is also not a logical statement or mathematical statement. What is a request? So, if someone is requesting you to do something, then it is a request sentence. Or if someone saying, "Please give me a pen," if somebody is requesting you, pleading you to some, do something, then it is called a request. Please give me a pen, or please give me someone another thing. That is. A request sentence that is also not a logical statement or mathematical statement. Okay, so the type is suggestion. Suggestion. Okay. Suggestion. What is a suggestion? If someone is suggesting you to do something, it is called suggestion. What is suggestion? You should wait. Up early. You should wake up early, or you should you should do this. Such kind of sentences are called suggestions. Okay, this type of sentences are sentences are called suggestions. These are also not mathematical statements. So we will take few examples on mathematical statements. So six into four. Six into four is equal to twenty-seven. Example number one. Example. So six into four is it a statement? Okay, few of you might tell that this is not a statement, but this is a statement. Okay, this is a statement. What is it say? 
what does it say 6 into 4 it is 27 this is false okay this is false so what is 6 into 4 it is 24 but it is what is it what we here said 6 into 4 it is 27 it is false but it is still a statement okay? it is still a statement and its truth value is truth value is f f means false t means true you must have learned this in example okay so 6 into 4 27 it doesn't matter if the statement has uh, statement is false or true it can be a statement still so example what so the next example example two x plus 9 is equal to 20 x plus 9 is equal to 20. this looks like this statement but it is not a statement this okay this is not a statement why we do not know the value of x if it is said that 2 plus 9 is equal to 20 then it can become a statement even if it false it is statement but this x we do not know the value of x it can be anything it is not precise okay it is arbitrary so we say that this is not a logical statement okay. this is not a logical statement so then what what is it what is it so is this a statement no, it is also not a statement. Why? It is interrogative statement. It is a question. So you see, we have a question mark. Someone is asking something to another. So this is question. This is a question. So it cannot be considered as a statement. So this is also not a statement. So example four. Please sit down. Okay. This is sentence. Is it a statement? No, it is also not a statement because you see please here. Okay, what, what does it mean? It means that it is a request. Okay. This is a request. So it is not a statement. See, it is not a statement. This is interrogative statement. Interrogative. Interrogative sentence. Sorry. Interrogative sentence. So this is not also not a statement. So next example, example five, the moon revolves around the sun, see, okay, we all know that moon revolves around the earth, but what is said in this uh, sentence, the moon revolves around the sun, so the truth value of this statement is false. Truth, what is the truth value? Truth value is false, but, but it is a statement. Okay, it is still a statement. Okay, its truth value is false, but it is still a statement. Okay. okay. Next example. Next example. Every Every real number is a complex number. Every real number is a complex number. Then this sentence is given. Do you think this is a statement? Yes, this is a statement. This is a statement. It is a false statement. Okay. It is a false statement, but, but it is still a statement. This is false. Okay. Real numbers are not complex numbers. They are they are different from each other, totally different from each other. Okay. Example. Next example. He is honest. He is honest. So this looks like a statement, but it is not a statement because he is honest. We do not know who this he is. Okay. Who this person is. So this can be true, this can be false, but it is still not a statement. Okay. It is not a statement. So we will Okay, now we will see some basic things in logic. What is a true a true statement is written as T 
and for false it indicates it is indicated as a for true a statement which is true we write it as t and for false we write a maybe if you if you have learned boolean algebra they write it as 1 and 0 so we will not write it as 1 and 0 we will write it as t and a now see conjunction conjunction what is conjunction that is and operator and operator and operator okay? and operator and operator is called a conjunction what is conjunction so with this p p is p is uh, tall and q is p is smart okay he is tall and he is smart then what is p and q what is p and q p and q implies he is tall and smart okay so you have to use here and so that is conjunction statement if you see any and or sometimes but is also used so if you see this this kind of uh, sentences statements are called conjunction statements so it is and if they are indicated by this operator this p and q okay this operator is used remember this operator p and q this operator is used to indicate the conjunction okay now we will see so how again conjunction 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 how to find the truth table for conjunction it is p and q t t f a t f t a and what is p and q what is p and q p and q is true if both these values are true see in conjunction if both the values are t then only the result is t otherwise it is always false okay it is false otherwise so here t and a if and t if and a. so both are not t therefore the result is a okay so if both are t then the result is t this is conjunction okay. now we will see this junction what is this junction so this junction this junction is indicated as this operator it is called as or operator or operator so how do you find the truth table of this junction suppose p q and p or q what is it p p f f p f T, F. How do you find the uh, disjunction of any two statements? If any of them is T, if any one, if you have at least one T, then the truth value is T. So here we have two T's. So we have at least one T there. So the value is T. So here also we have at one T. So the result is T. So here also we have T. T. But in this case we do not have any t so t therefore the value is a so if you have at least one t in the example the result is t for and operator okay. so now we now let us understand conditional statement conditional statement what is a conditional statement What is a conditional statement? A conditional statement is in the form if p, then q. Okay. If p, then q. It is written as p implies q. What do we call this? Implies. Okay. Implies. We call it as implies. If p, then q. If 
you score for thirty percent, you will pass. So this is a conditional statement that says if you score forty percent, then you will pass. So this this part is called P, and this part is considered to be Q, and we mathematically can write it as P implies Q. That is, if P then Q. P implies Q. So how do you find the truth table for this? P implies Q. How do you find it? So we will first write P Q P P F and F P F P. -Q. So what is the result? P implies Q. So in this case, consider these two. Only if you have T and then F, the current state of the result is F. Only when you have T and F. Okay, let me write it. Okay. Let us write here P, Q, and P implies Q. P, T, F, F, P, F, P, and F. So only in this condition, okay. only in this condition, the result is A. In every other condition, the result is two. Okay. If you are, have T and then A, if, if the statement is like this, if first T and then A, the result is A. You know, in all the other cases, the result is two. Okay. This is conditional statement. It is represented as. P implies Q. This represented represents conditional statement. Okay. So now we will learn about biconditional. Biconditional statement. Statement. What is by conditional statement? It is indicated by this symbol of okay? P implies and implied by Q. The truth table for this is P Q P T F A P F T and F. So when both the values, both the values are same in this by by conditional statements if both the values are same then the result is then the result is true okay if both the values are same the result is true in other all the other cases the result is false okay so this is by conditional statement okay so and last thing is negation what is negation negation is simply a negative statement of any statement. So, if you are P, if you are finding the negation, so how to find P and negation of P? Negation it is indicated by symbol this this symbol the wave symbol okay? negation of P. If P is true, the negation of P is false. If P is false, the negation of P is that is the simple way to find it. Okay. Now we will take some examples. Okay. We will take some examples. In previously asked examples, we will take nothing else. Which of the following statement is not a statement in logic? Which which one is not the statement that we have been asked? Okay. First of all, the earth is a land. So is is it a statement? Yes, it is. Statement Earth is planet, it's also it is true. Okay, that we don't have to consider. Earth is a planet, plants are living objects, plants are living objects. Yes, this is also a statement which has truth value t, it is true. So, therefore, it has truth value t minus root 9 is a rational number. What is minus 9 is minus of root 9 is actually a, is actually. A, Complex number, okay, is actually a 
complex number, but we don't have to consider it. It doesn't matter here, okay? The rational, it is given that it is a rational number. This has truth value f, but it's still a statement. But I am lying. This is not a statement. It is just a linguistic sentence, okay? It is just a sentence. It is. It cannot be considered as mathematical statement. Okay? I am lying. Okay? Okay. So this will be your answer. Next, these are so asking previous exam. This, this first was asking CT examination. This is also asking some exam, exam okay? Which of the following is not a correct statement? Not a statement, it is asked. Okay, mathematics is interesting. Root 3 is a prime. So what we will consider first B option. Okay? Root 3 is a prime. Okay, root 3 is, is it a prime? Derivative is wrong. True or false, okay? We just need to find if it is statement or not. So root 3 is a prime. It can be a prime, it cannot be, maybe not, but we don't have to consider it. So root 3 is a prime. So this is a statement, okay? This is a statement. Root 2 is irrational. This is also a statement. Okay? The sun is a star, okay? This, this maybe this has truth value t or a. This also maybe has truth value t or a, but it's still a statement. Also d, sun is a star. It is also a statement. But mathematics is interesting this is not a statement why it is not a statement so mathematics is interesting few may say this mathematics is interesting few may deny it deny it so this cannot be a statement so what is the correct answer what is the correct what, what is the correct answer is a a is the correct answer okay next example okay so what is so first we will read the question. If P, what is P D1? P. Rahul is physically disabled. What is Q? Rahul stood in first in the class. So what is P? Rahul is physically disabled. And what is Q? Rahul stood first in the class. Then the statement. What is the statement here? In spite of physically physical disability. Rahul stood first in the class. Okay. This, the statement given here is in spite of physical disability, Rahul stood first in the class. This, this statement can be written in simple way as Rahul Rahul has physical physical disability and he <coughs> stands first in the class okay <coughs> I wish that I had a at physical disability and he stood first in the class okay what we have used here? We have used and. So and. What is that? What does it indicate? It indicates that the statement is. What kind of statement is it? It is conjunction. Okay. It is conjunction. So what will be the answer? It is and operator is used. Therefore, the answer is this. P and Q. P and Q. Both the things are included. So P and Q. Okay. Next example. So what is given here? Similar example. It is simpler than the previous one. P is a man is happy. A man is happy and Q the man is rich. And what we have asked? The symbolic representation that is we have asked. Okay? The symbolic representation of if a man is not rich. What is given here? A man is happy and the man is rich. So what, uh, what is asked? A man is not happy, not rich. So the man is rich is Q. The man is not rich means this negation of Q. So man is not rich means negation of Q. Okay, negation of Q. Then he is not happy. Then how do we write then? We use conditional symbol. Okay, conditional symbol implies that this arrow. 
His arrow is used for conditional statements. Okay. Then he is not happy. He is not happy. What is the statement given here? P means man is happy. P means a man is happy. Therefore, negation of he is not happy means we have to use negation of P. Okay. Negation what is negation of negation of P. So which will be the correct answer? This this one will be the correct answer. B is negation Q implies negation P. This will be the correct answer. Okay? This also example has been asked in previous exams. In 2004, this was asked. Okay. Next example. So here three again, three statements are given. What are those statements? P says, P says Ram is rich. Q says Ram is successful. R says Ram is talented. And we have to write the symbolic form of the given statement. What is the given statement? Ram is neither rich nor successful and he is not talented. Ram is neither rich. Means what? Neither rich. Where is rich? This is the statement for the word rich. Ram is rich. Here what is said? Ram is neither rich. So we have, we will so negative word is used. Therefore, we will use negation of P. Okay, we will use negation of P. Now also what is said? He is not nor successful. He is not successful. So what is the statement for successful? It's Q. Ram is successful. We will use negation of Q. But what operator we should use here? So Ram is neither rich nor successful. So, so if we simplify this sentence, it says that Ram is not rich and he is not successful. Okay? Successful. Okay. This is the simple way to put this statement. Okay. So what we have used and so. Here we will use which operator we will use and operator and operator will be used here. So we will complete here. Also said that and he is and and use. So this is easier. We have to use and operator here. He is not talented. So okay, what does third uh, step, statement suggest? Ram is talented. And here it is said he is not talented. So here are we will use negation of R. So what does R mean? R means Ram is talented. So Ram is not talented. How do we write Ram is not talented? We will use negation of that statement. So neg negation of R. So this is the correct option. Which one option is correct here? The negation A. A is the correct option here. Okay. A is the correct option. So this example was asked in 2008 CD examination. This is also asked in CT exam. Okay. Let P be the proposition. What is the proposition? Mathematics is interesting. So what? Mathematics is interesting. This is the first question. Okay. And let Q. So what is P? What is P? Mathematics is interesting. This is the first question, first uh, statement. And what is Q? Q be the proposition. Mathematics is difficult. Okay, mathematics is difficult. Okay, difficult. Mathematics is difficult. What we have been asked? Then the symbol P and Q means. What is? We have to find P and Q. What is this operator? This is. And operator, okay. This is and operator. So, what does it mean? Math is interesting and math is difficult. So, math mathematics is interesting and mathematics is difficult. This is the correct answer. We will see this in options which one is the correct. So this is this is the correct option. Okay, mathematics is interesting and mathematics is difficult. So we will see other options as well. Mathematics. What is said in option D? Mathematics is 
इंटरेस्टिंग विच मीन्स पी और मैथमेटिक्स इज दिख और मीन्स और मीन्स दिस ऑपरेटर और क्यू एंड वीवर आस और एंड ऑपरेटर से दिस इज और करेक्ट ऑप्शन दिस इज नॉट पी द मैथमेटिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन लॉजिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ दिस सेंटेंस इज पी और क्यू ओके For B, now we will see for B. Mathematics is interesting. That means P and is implied by mathematics is difficult. <coughs> implied by means implied. This this arrow we will use. Okay, implied by mathematics is difficult. Two. I mean this this cannot be. This is the correct way to put it. P P here. Okay. What is first? Mathematics is interesting. That means P. implies that means this arrow that mathematics is difficult p implies q this is p implies q okay this is p implies q this is q implies p this is the correct option that we wanted to find and d is p or q okay these are the correct representation of all the four statements and the correct option here is which one is correct c c is the correct option okay. now d what is said P P boys are playing. P it indicates that boys are playing, and Q means boys are happy. So we have to find the equivalent form of compound statement. Negation P or Q. Negation P or Q. Okay, negation P or Q. So what is negation of P? So what is P actually? P is boys are playing. What is negation of P means? Boys are boys are not playing. Okay, boys are not playing. Negation. If P means boys are playing, the negation of P means boys are not playing. So what is this operator? This operator is or operator. So we will write or or. So we have to write Q just as it is. Or what does it Q say? Q says boys are happy. So we will write. Here, boys are happy. Okay, so this is the correct statement for this statement. Okay, boys are not playing or boys are not happy. So which one is the correct option? Boys are boys are not playing or they are happy. See this one. A is the correct option. Okay, see boys are not playing as we have written here or Or and they are happy here. Yeah, they are happy. So this is the correct representation of this statement, this logical statement. Okay. So what is what would be the representation for B? Boys are not happy. Boys are not happy means what? Boys are not happy. Boys are happy means Q. Means boys are not happy means negation of Q. So or or means this indicator. If they are playing. They are playing means P. So this will be the proper representation for statement. Also for C, for C it is boys are playing means P. You will write P. Or they are not happy. Or means this operator. Not happy means not happy. Boys are not happy means negation of Q. Again, the option D. Mathematical representation of option D is boys are not playing means. Negation of P, negation of P, or or means this operator, or they are not happy means negation of Q, negation of Q. This will be the mathematical representation of all other options, but the correct option is this A. Next example. If P and Q are true statements in logic, which of the following statement pattern is? Also, the previous example was asking. See the example. Also, this also, this example is also asking. 2007 exam. Okay. P and Q are true statements. What is P and Q are both true statements. So P is true statement. Q is also a true statement in logic. Which of the following statement pattern is true? Which of the following is true? That we have been asked. Okay. So we we'll go with every option. Okay, we we'll put T everywhere. Okay. 
me put p everywhere okay so t or q t or t so we use these operators so t or t is or or operator is use so therefore t or t is t and negation of t t and negation of t what is what is negation of t it is Negation of t it is a. So t and f. What we have seen in conjunction, if both the values are true, then the result is true. So one of the values is a. So this result is false. It is false. What what is given? Which of the following statement pattern is true? That has been asked. So the result here is f. So this cannot be our answer. Next b. We will put t here as we did earlier. Okay. T. P. T or T. It is T or T implies negation of T. So T or T, it is F. So or, sorry. Yeah. T or T means in our operator, what we have seen? If any one of them is true, the result is true. So T or T is T. Implies negation of t. What is negation of t? It is f. Negation of t is f. So t implies f means this is also false. This is the only condition where the conditional statement is false. Is. So this is also false. Okay. The third example now. Here we also put t everywhere. T. So t and negation of t. negation of t. What is t and negation of t? It is f. F implies t. Okay. T and negation of t is f t. T and negation of t is t and f. So and operator. In and operator, if both the values of t will if the, both the values are t, then the result is t. So one of the values is here f, so the result is f. So we have f implies t. So what is it implies t? In conditional statement, f implies t is value true. So therefore, this is our correct option. What we have been asked, which one, which pattern is true? So therefore, this pattern is true. Okay.